So hey guys and welcome back to another Python tutorial. So in today's video we're going to be covering the bare basics of how to use a data manipulation library called pandas in Python. So we're going to be doing very basic stuff today which will cover creating a data frame, querying data or um, filtering data, uh, as well as some other things. So what we need to do first off is to make sure you have a library called pandas installed. So you can simply do this by opening CMD and then running the command uh, pip install pandas. And then once you've basically done that, that will ensure that you have all the packages that are required for this tutorial. Now, just as a heads up, this tutorial is going to lead to a project that we will work on where we will be practicing whatever we learned in this tutorial. So I would recommend sticking around just so that you can um, put these skills into sort of a real life project. So without further ado, let's get started. First things first, you want to import pandas as PD, give it a alias as PD just so that it's easier to type up. Now pandas can be used to directly read in data from files, uh, from Excel files or even text files that are comma separated or separated by tabs or spaces. But what we're going to be doing first is sort of understanding the very um, fundamentals of it. So in pandas, there's a concept called data frames, and this can be simply simply thought as of in a format of a table. So in Excel, how you have columns, rows, etc. It's a similar thing where you'd have in a data frame, you'd have columns and rows as well. Now to create a data frame, uh, there's several ways to do this, but we're going to follow a structured way to do it. So we create a, data, uh, a regular um, variable, let's call this data, and we'll equal that to a dictionary. Now if you don't know what a dictionary is and how it works, it's basically a uh, very simple data structure known as objects, also in JavaScript, which can store key value pairs. So anything that goes in here needs to have a key, and that key needs to have a value assigned to it. So the key in this case, let's make sure that's going to be... Um, Let's say we're tracking um, our budget, right? Across different days. So we'll, we'll create a key called day and the value of this, let's just assign that to uh, one day, right? Now it's important to note that uh, in a dictionary, you can only have unique keys. So you can't have, for example, day equals. It doesn't matter if the value is Monday again, but the key itself cannot repeat. So in order to have multiple records, what we're gonna do is wrap this dictionary um along into a list so we're basically what we're going to have here is a list of dictionaries so we have a list with multiple dictionaries as items so the first what, what you can think of this is as each dictionary being a row in your table and this will make a lot more sense when we actually convert this into a so-called pandas data frame so each dictionary will contain basically each row of data in this case. So we'll have a day column, which we'll assign to Monday for now. Then we'll have the, let's just say item, or that will just be the item we're spending our money on, let's assume. So let's just say this is a gym membership because you're feeling fancy, you signed up for a gym membership. Or we'll have another key called cost. And that's just gonna, let's make it a float for now so that it can actually make sense. Set it to something realistic like 18.99. And that all makes sense for now. So that's day mon so on Monday you had purchased an item for gym membership which cost you $18.99. Now that's just one row of data. Now let let's say we wanted to add another item to it. So let's say on the same day we also purchased some groceries, right? So add another item I can spell groceries and let's call that bananas. Let's say you went to, you're feeling healthy, you've been to the gym, bought some bananas. Let's just say, I don't know, two ninety nine for now, right? So that's two items with Monday. Let's just add a bit of variance, add another item for Tuesday, and then we can finally convert this into a data frame. So we'll add this as Tuesday. Let's say you're feeling quite conservative and you only spend on a Netflix membership for, let's say, four ninety nine dollars a month. Cool. So now we have created a basic data structure here which we have a list which contains multiple dictionaries like i said each dictionary contains key and value items and these are basically let's assume they're rows for now so once you have your basic data structure ready uh what you can do then is convert this into a data frame using a pandas function called pd dot two data uh pd dot uh second pd dot data frame uh, and what this does is it basically converts your um, 
list that you pass to it into a uh, real data frame. So you pass the, your data to it or your list, and then when you run it, boom, you have a nicely formatted table. And like I said, it's, it's nothing complicated. It's just a table as you would have in Excel. So you have the day column, you have the items column, and then you have the cost column. And each uh, row is a dictionary, as you can see. So you've got the row one, then row two, and then row three. It looks pretty good. Um, so far, so good. So that's basically the very basics of how you would uh, begin and create a data frame out of basically nothing. So once you have a data frame, you can actually do a lot of fancy stuff with it. So for example, let's say you want to only find out um, the days where, uh, where the day is equal to Monday, right? So you can simply do that by querying the data or even filtering it. So before we do anything, well, let's assign this a variable so that we don't just store it in memory, right? So we'll do df, which stands for data frame, equals pd.dataframe data. Perfect. So let me get rid of this. And now what we're going to do here is what we're actually doing is querying the data. There's two ways to do this now. One way is easier than the other. It just depends on syntax, really. So what you do in a common scenario is you do df, and then you do square brackets and quote quotation marks. And this is where you'd sort of write your query. Um, now you would do uh, df, let's say day, and then you can do double equals because uh, that's how you check for a certain type. And then we'll put it one day from now, right? Now, if you run this, what you'll get is something that might confuse you at the start, but it will make a lot more sense later. This is what we call a Boolean mask or a um, sort of series that is returned in the form of a Boolean mask in Pandas. So now what we let's see what we really queried. We said we wanted only the rows where the day column is equal to Monday. Now, let's see if we can make sense out of this. If you look at the data frame, it's saying that the first one is true. Is that correct? Yes, it is, because it is Monday. Second one is also true. Is that correct? It is, because it's Monday. And it's saying the third one is false. Uh, that's correct, because it's Tuesday. Now, this all makes sense, but it will make a lot more sense if it only returned the rows to us uh, that had the date Monday. We can do that by just wrapping DF uh, around this query or Boolean mask. And now what you have is a neatly uh, structured um, data frame with only Mondays, like we queried. Now this might be a bit tedious, but trust me, you'll get used to the sort of syntax and format once you do it a few times. You can do the same thing with different columns as well. So you can also do, for example, we can, instead of just doing equals, you can say, we want to find out days where we spent less than 10 pounds, right? So if you just do less than 10, this will return us the rows where we only had a cost of less than 10 pounds, which is in this case, obviously, and this case we spent more, so it didn't return that result. Another way to query the data, as promised uh, to show you, would be to do df.query, and now we need uh, quotes. Now, if you're using double quotes outside, you need to make sure you use uh, single quotes and in other instances inside this. If you're using single quotes outside, uh, in other instances, you'd have to use double quotes. I'll make sense of that in a second. So let's say we want only days where it's Monday, right? So we do day double equals and now when you're typing in monday you treat it as a regular string just because you're inside quotes uh doesn't mean you have to you can get away with typing just you know monday because that will throw out uh an error at you because it's assuming that monday is a variable here and obviously it's not we want it to know that monday is not a variable but a string so we wrap it around in quotes and then if you run it again bosh you have the results you have uh, all the records for monday so that's pretty much it for querying the data. Now, you might also ask whether this is actually making changes to the data frame. And I will answer with it is not because we're not actually, this doesn't make in place changes. We're just querying the data and just, a, it's basically like a preview. Now, if you wanted to save the changes, you'd have to assign it to a variable. So you can either overwrite or create a new one. So I'll just call this filtered data frame equals that to that. And then now if we look at filtered um, data frame, uh let's probably spell that wrong yep we'll have just a filtered data frame instead of the whole one and if we look at df we have the whole one perfect so that's how you basically query data and filter data as well and that's basically it um one last thing i'd like to show you before i call this tutorial an end uh would be how you would actually save this data into some sort of um, permanent file so that you can open it again and view it again for example so we have df right 
Now what we're going to do is just do dot two, and then there's various different ways that you can actually save this in. You can save it as JSON and Parquet files and whatnot, but we'll use CSV and then you give it a name. So basically let's call this uh, tutorial one dot CSV. Now, if you want this index, uh, which is like row numbers to be saved, you just leave it as is and it will work fine but if you don't want the index to be saved you do index equals false which i would recommend because that's just another piece of data we don't need and it's going to increase our file size for no reason so run that now let me see if i can find okay here we are and we have a file here which is perfect uh because we saved it and if you open it boom we have everything that we saved now if you had not set index to false you'd get an annoying column here which would look something like that now obviously we don't want that but if you're working with something like, something like rankings i guess you could keep that in now you may ask what if i don't want to create the data frame from scratch and read in some data from an existing csv but well, easy actually so we do pd dot instead of pd dot data frame because we're not creating it from scratch we do pd dot read csv uh open close brackets and in quotes provide the uh url to the file and there it is just like that now we assign that to a variable uh, df underscore new and we have a new data frame just like that perfect so that will be it for today's tutorial guys i'm going to try and keep them short and sweet and coming as frequently as i can so the next part of the panda series we're basically going to go through a bit more advanced topics like aggregation which is sort of grouping and um, carrying out actions to data as well as merging so if you guys have any other uh, video concepts or ideas that you'd like me to execute please let me know in the comments and i shall see your beautiful faces in the next tutorial peace <laughs>